Thank you very much for being with us today at this very special moment where the Alumni Association of Faculty of Agriculture at University of Peradeniya uh, um, having its, its first webinar series starting from today onwards on topics that are very useful, sometimes controversial in the field of agriculture to create awareness among members and not only the alumni of Faculty of Agriculture, but members in the industry especially. When you start speaking of agriculture, you all do understand that seed or the planting material matters a lot. That's exactly why our speaker today has opted for this Seed Matters workshop, the Seed Matters as the title. I will let you know more about this presentation, but before that, I think I have to invite the president of the Al Alumni Association of Faculty of Agriculture, University of Peradeniya, Dr. Tushar Vikramaraji, who is also the director of the Horticulture Research and Development Institute at this particular moment, to briefly introduce and let us know, let the audience know why AAFAUP decided to embark on such an education and awareness program. Over to you, Dr. Vikramaraji. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the members of the Alumni Association of Faculty of Agriculture and also non-members, everybody who have gathered today to listen the this uh, first uh, webinar. This is actually public webinar on the one of the series of the webinar organized by the Faculty of Agriculture uh, Alumni Association. Actually, uh, why we organize such a series of webinars in order to the, um, share in the information about the uh, the important issues, the existing issues in the agriculture. Because today we have selected the first one, uh, seed matters. That is the, uh, we are going to talk about, Dr. Lakmini Priyanta is going to talk about the truth and uh, uh, myths of the seed production certification and utilization. In a similar manner, we have series of another 10 we have so far identified. Those are the, the uh, issues, existing issues in the Sri Lankan agriculture sector. Therefore, we, this is the first one. We are um, having today more than 25 uh, the, the listeners today, but we hope that uh, many more will join uh, in future because this uh, series of webinars will be conducted uh, in the second week of the each month in the Wednesday, second week of Wednesday of the second week and the Wednesday of the fourth week of the each month. Then um, there are many more uh, interesting subject and important subjects we are going to share with you. This is actually, a, this is a kind of a, social activity uh, the, started by the Alumni Association of the Faculty of Agriculture, University of Peradeniya. We um, humble request to all participants, all uh, members and professionals to the, uh, share this uh, information with your colleagues and the peers uh, in order to get the more uh, the, the, uh, visibility and also the sharing of the information to the more uh, people. Uh, then uh, with this uh, small uh, remarks, I again thank uh, thanks to the, um, uh, the Professor Buddhi Marang as the uh, moderator today and the Dr. Lakmini Priyanta as the important uh, the resource person today. Then uh, uh, over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Vikramachi, for explaining to the audience why we have decided to move ahead with this webinar series. The most important part, as you quite correctly said, every time when science matters, there are in a lot of occasions, we always find the myth starts leading the way in terms of development and so on. And what we have decided is to debunk those myths and present the truth or true facts to the audience who are interested in, especially in the agro-based industries to understand what's going on. 
so the reality and so on so that they can make evidence-based decision making in their future activities and so on and that is why Alumni Association of Faculty of Agriculture at University of Peradeniya has come forward to ensure that such reality and such truth, factual material will be presented to the people in the industry to make sure awareness creation take place to the maximum possible extent. This is the first step, the first webinar, as Dr. Vikramachi quite correctly said, and as I told you at the very beginning also, we have selected an important topic to move ahead, and more importantly, we have selected the best person, the resource person also, to look at this particular subject area and create awareness among the stakeholders. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, I must also tell you, while saying so, we also plan for this well. We decided to look at four things on ground, which is not the correct scenario. So to make sure that people make sure that people will look at those myths, not live in those myths, but to understand the reality, we have decided to invite Dr. Lakmini Priyanka, the additional director of seed certification service of the Department of Agriculture. For the time being, we, the Alumni Association of Faculty of Agriculture University of Peradin, Unimus decided that Dr. Priyanta, one of the alumnus of the uh, AAFA UP, to be the first speaker today. And we are glad, though limited numbers, still interested parties have joined in. And we'll make sure, and put, and put clearly that you will have a very fruitful presentation and discussion as well. Just to let you know about Dr. Lakmini Priyanka, as I told you, she is currently the additional director, seed certification service of the Department of Agriculture. See, she obtained a BSc agriculture degree that's why I call her an alumnus of AAFA UP in 1997 and a PhD from Punjab Agriculture University in India in 2007. So without much ado, let's go ahead with the presentation, giving the giving permission to Dr. Lakmini Priyanta to start on with. But as I told you, since it's a structured presentation, myself as the moderator and Dr. Priyanta, Lakmini Priyanta as the presenter, we have had few discussions to see how we are going to approach this particular subject. So basically, we are looking at four important items which we consider and it's they are myths that are being that are being propagated among people in the industry so we want to debunk them step by step and let the industry personnel know scientists academia knows including students that what the truth is and that exactly why dr priyanta has opted for the topic seed matters exploring Action certification and utilization. Well, Dr. Priyanta, I know we have we asked that presentation, but let me start talking about the first myth that a lot of people think that is happening. A lot of people say improved hybrid or improved varieties and imported things are unsuitable for farming or not suitable for farming. A lot of people start talking about it in, 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 in various audiences, various conferences and so on. But it's important for all of us to know what is the real scientific fact in this. So with that initial remark, I will be coming back to you with a lot of questions thereafter also. I now invite Dr. Lakmini Priyanta to make a presentation. And for the audience, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please make sure you type them in the chat box. Please do not speak because we cannot allocate more time for that. Please type your question in the chat box and we'll make sure the questions will be extracted from the chat box, chat box and put forward to Dr. Lakmini Priyanta for her to respond. Over to you, Lakmini. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, first of all, I would like to thank alumni of University of Peradeniya for giving me this opportunity. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, members of the uh, alumni association, uh, first, let me share my presentation. Yeah. 
So can you see this? Is it possible to see? It's still not on screen, but maybe for other members. Can the other members see? Dr. Nayanaka, can you see the screen? Okay, we can yeah, see. Now, now we can see. This. We can see that now. Go ahead, Lakmini. Okay. So, uh, yeah. As we have mentioned, so there are a lot of myths and truths in seed industry. Actually, most of them are myths, not the truths. So I want to uh, give explanations with scientific background uh, the, uh, ex while explaining the truths. So before uh, moving further, I'll uh, just to ex explain why seeds are more important. In, uh, we consider why seeds are most important input in agriculture. Here you can see a lot of inputs that we used in agriculture, like fertilizer, pesticides, farm equipment, etc. But except seeds, all other inputs are common in agriculture. Fertilizer, water, if you grow rice, vegetables, or fruit, any fruit crop or other perennial crops, those are very common except seeds. So these seeds, uh, normally it has genetic diversity and we um, have identified that seeds represented a vast reservoir of genetic diversity in plants, which ultimately leads to food diversity in, uh, food diversity for the people in the world. So different crop varieties and cultivars uh, we have we know that those are evolved over time to adapt to various environmental conditions, including both abiotic and biotic stresses, to meet the specific agricultural requirements. This genetic diversity allows our farmers to select seeds of most suitable varieties for their crops and also uh, for the uh, to achieve their production targets. Also, these seeds. Uh, uh, act as the starting point for crop production. Uh, and as I have mentioned earlier, the, they contain a the lot of genetic information needed to grow a specific plant variety. Uh, the however, the quality and characteristics of seed directly affect the yield and quality of seeds. Then uh, before, uh, now uh, uh, in uh, earlier days, these seeds are just farmers uh, uh, collect their seeds for the sub subsistence farming. But now uh, our sector has evolved. All, already seed sector has been commercialized. So uh, there are so many uh, activities are there. So typical seed industry, uh, have uh, very important activities like varietal development, varietal, variety trading and registration that is for uh, releasing for the official cultivation and also included in a national list. Then varietal maintenance. Uh, uh, is needed for the seed multiplication. Those seeds provide the... Uh, basic for cultivation of uh, production of certified seeds. Then seed processing and seed enhancement, that means value addition for all the seeds like seed coating, then priming, so many uh, methods that many methods are used to uh, enhance the quality of the seeds. Then distribution and marketing is also a very important activity in seed industry. Apart from that, quality control ultimately come into the picture to control the quality of seeds in uh, uh, seeds in the market. So right now we are uh, enacting a Seed Act number 22 of 20, 2003 uh, to regulate the uh, seed industry in the country. Now uh, let's see. What are these seeds or the quality of the seeds? Not, uh, we know that farmers judge quality on emergence, just uh, uh, germination or emergence, then appearance, color, plumpness, physical purity, etc. as the to judge the quality of the seeds. But scientifically, we know that quality assurance is more elaborate on several aspects like varietal purity, that is genetic purity, germination potential, physical purity, moisture content, 
uh, then uh, healthy seeds like free from pests and diseases and then appearance and smell now uh, we will consider what uh, at the beginning of uh, buddhism mentioned that there are so many myths that especially uh, many people in the country even some higher officials they think that improved seeds are not suitable for farming or cultivation we will just see whether this is correct or not with scientific evidences then uh, there are these are the type of seeds that we the seeds are that available in the market or uh, those are the seeds we used uh, in day to day life or cultivation practices then uh, native seeds normally these native seeds are the land races of a particular site where this was originated uh, as a rich biodiverse uh, country these seeds are well some uh, native seeds are available in our country then local variety or traditional or farmers varieties the second category these land races not introduced from other areas but if introduced they are already localized after growing several generations now you know in a colonial period many varieties have been introduced to sri lanka and after those are now already localized and farmers consider those varieties as traditional varieties like brinjal then tomato there are so many uh, traditional varieties as well then uh, also genotypes not altered by breeders but grown continuously by farmers over years is uh, also considered as farmer saved varieties then the third category is high yielding variety or improved or modern variety these are developed by selecting and following principles of genetics then uh, hybrid seeds or f1 seeds uh, is the uh, this actually this is a controversial issue many people think these hybrid seeds are not uh, suitable for cultivation and also altered by introducing many new genes these f1 seeds are produced by crossing two pure parents or two inbred lines then the last one is genetically modified seeds or gmo seeds these seeds of genotypes that undergo gene alteration and modification under laboratory conditions and i'll explain it later uh, first uh, we'll just see what is this native seed uh, actually these uh, native seeds over many they normally produce seeds by uh, producing seeds and over the years many different types of seeds or plant species have been evolved and uh, uh, we know this these uh, seeds are well adapted to they are living uh, or localized uh, or particular location they are well adapted to those conditions then these uh, seeds are selected and managed by local people in local environment and they actually they are ha having high level of intra intra diversity also farmers play a, a crucial role in maintaining and improving seeds they are well adapted to growing areas uh, now uh, many different sciences uh, these native seeds are all as there is high uh, variation so but these are the basics now uh, in uh, in the uh, this uh, in the wild the most uh, plants produced uh, by seeds as well as they are resistant to many biotic and abiotic stresses uh, especially uh, adapted to environmental conditions and changes of environmental like we are these days we are talking about climate change these native varieties are well adapted to climatic changes as well then uh, however yield is comparatively low uh, 
than the developed varieties or the improved varieties. These uh, seeds develop when flowers are pollinated, uh, usually by insects, sometimes uh, by winds or any other, like uh, many, uh, many pollination methods, these uh, flowers produce seeds. Then uh, ultimately, uh, we will get mixing of genes of multiple individuals as a result, the, we will get uh, genetically diverse individuals. So here you can see in this uh, diagram as well. Uh, so these native uh, crops always developing or produce another uh, different kind of, uh, or the characters are not stable. So different population is in or diverse population you can see here. So, uh, so ultimately we can decide this seeds are not suitable as there is no uniformity as well as once we grow this kind of seeds uh, the expected uh, characters of the crop that we want will not be achieved therefore normally we do not uh, recommend this kind of seeds for the commercial cultivation then the uh, Second category, the seeds of local variety or traditional or farmer saved variety. Uh, this process back. Uh, this uh, farm, there are so many uh, advantages or desirable traits in uh, wild uh, or the native species uh, in or wild plants having. Uh, such as uh, larger seeds, better taste, easier harvest or uh, better quality, then automatically farmers select these crops for domestication and they started to produce seeds by selecting the best performing varieties or crops. Uh, this early stage of crop evolution uh, results, uh, actually uh, they have done like trial and error method, but these, are, these farmers are the first breeders in the world and they produce uh, or they have done selective breeding unknowingly. They are the breeders of these plants. In uh, this picture, it is very clear that uh, there are, there, this is the population and uh, by crossing two population, they will produce better performing varieties. Even our grandfathers, when we were small, uh, they have collected seed from uh, best performing varieties and kept for the next uh, cultivation or next season. So similarly, they have selected the better performing varieties and continuously they have selected and ultimately will end up, ended up with good or higher quality varieties. Uh, then these traditional crop varieties were primarily propagated and uh, they uh, produce seeds using informal seed system. Uh, but sometimes they saved seeds and shared with the, where their neighbors and communities. But nowadays, even these traditional varieties, there is a good market and commercially available in uh, our retail shops or the uh, in the seed industry. This so this decentralized approach to seed management allowed for the preserved these varieties as well as evolution of many land races. Here I can give some example. Uh, so these are the beans variety. No, you know, now uh, this Capri variety is um, popular in uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, Sri Lankan bean grow in farmers. More than six, around 64% of seeds, uh, are, uh, Capri seeds are 64% of Capri seeds are used for the uh, bean cultivation but initially there were few capri varieties like uh, uh, kalu capri uh, then kaha capri but later on there is a continuous evolution and farmers they select the best varieties uh, so now there are so many capri varieties but still uh, by selecting the better performing varieties farmers continuously using and they contributed to the seed industry in the country
Uh, then uh, the next one is this improved variety. So the open pollinated variety. Actually, uh, initially I must uh, that the initial crosses are there uh, by uh, our breeders. This this is a natural process, as I have mentioned. Uh, in wild relatives, there are a natural crossing program program is going on, but our pre breeders they think. Uh, that process should be accelerated. So same principle use is used, but with breeding or genetic principles. They use the both uh, recipient as the parent or donor parent. And uh, while crossing these two, they will get F1 generation. And this uh, F1, using individuals with that exhibit the desired traits are selected as the backcross parents. Then uh, by repeated backcrossing and selection, this uh, process is going on and ultimately they try to fix the desired traits in a particular variety and ultimately it will be considered as the new variety. However, uh, if uh, the, after the development process, there should be a proper seed pro production program Otherwise, uh, even though it is very high or good for farming variety, if there is no proper seed production mechanism, our varieties will be ended. Therefore, care should be taken uh, for the seed production program as well. I just wanted to highlight these are the natural done uh, breeding. They have in, uh, oh, higher, better for forming varieties. Then uh, hybrids. Uh, then we will talk about these hybrid seeds. Now, uh, lo even local and imported hybrids are available, especially for vegetables and some maize varieties. So uh, these are the two, in hybrid seed production, two genetically different parent lines are crossed. The offspring or hybrid, they produce uh, high yield as well as resilience than their parent line due to hybrid vigor. The, uh, the, however, this heterosis or hybrid vigor effect is maintained only for one generation. So this is the process where uh, these hybrids are produced. Once again, actually, I'm not a breeder, but I am. Uh, I'm working on this seed uh, in the seed uh, technology research. But I just wanted to tell you this is a natural phenomenon because most of the people think these hybrids are. Uh, we have included uh, foreign genes into the plants, and uh, those are not. Uh, good for consumption that's why i wanted to just highlight how these hybrid seeds are produced so uh, initially they uh, select uh, parents uh, uh, of two genetically pure or sometimes distant parent plants with uh, desirable traits such as high yield disease tolerance or sometimes specific quality characteristics uh, having a consumer preferable then those seeds, uh, uh, these I pure, didn't understand that. These uh, seeds are cross pollinated, uh, and ultimately they will get the hybrid plant with high hybrid vigor. Uh, however, uh, so always uh, these uh, seeds have to be produced using by crossing these two male and female parent. But in uh, next generation, if you produce seeds from this uh, uh, first generation to F1 to F2, we will end up with a mixture of seeds. So and desired quality, or our expected quality will not be observed. Therefore, uh, this continuous seed production cannot be done. Uh, so uh, I have given uh, one uh, most... Uh, Cultivable hybrid variety produced by the Department of Agriculture uh, at Mahailu Palama Field Crop Research and Development Institute. So Galkiri Agam and MI Varani are the two pure lines or inbred lines used for that one. And uh, 
uh, by crossing these two parents, MICHY1 hybrid maize, that is a success story of the Department of Agriculture. So this variety is uh, being produced and very popular among the farming community as the seed producers. Uh, however, uh, there are some advantages as well as disadvantages of uh, these hybrid varieties. Uh, this uh, Hybrids uh, pr normally they produce higher yields. They often produce more yield than the open pollinated varieties. Uh, also, they are uh, resistant to many uh, biotic and abiotic uh, stresses. With uh, sometimes there are some specific traits, and also uniformity is there. So characters are consistent. Uh, so market in uh, ma making harvesting and is and crop management is easier and also high demand in the market. That's why our farmers prefer to grow hybrid seeds. Uh, but uh, there are some disadvantages as well. Always our farmers have to depend on the seed suppliers because farmers need to buy new hybrid seed for each and every time they go for cultivation. Uh, since the... Uh, I the, didn't the, understand that. No uh, stability uh, that cannot be uh, go for the own seed production. So, uh, how, and also there are lots of uniformity of varieties with uh, repeated use and uh, cost of uh, seed cost is, uh, tip, is very high because uh, those are more expensive than traditional open pollinated varieties. And then uh, this genetically, uh, yeah, final one, Genetically modified organisms, uh, normally the fragment of a DNA of a uh, donor plant uh, using the vector, uh, uh, those are incorporated into the recipient plants and uh, uh, or the desirable characters like one good example is Bt bacteria having toxins to uh, insects. So uh, now the, uh, in the world, there are so many uh, uh, varieties uh, or GMO uh, like may, BT maize, BT cotton, uh, even uh, we all are wearing cotton uh, clothes. Maybe at this time also most of the people may have uh, wearing this kind of uh, 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 this genetically modified cotton uh, or the clothes produced from the GMO crops. So ultimately uh, may, uh, resistant varieties uh, they have been developed by uh, modification of DNA uh, to get the desired traits. Then, uh, however, uh, in uh, uh, but this uh, seeds of GMO crops are normally costlier than naturally grown crops. Uh, this uh, we have introduced foreign gene to into the uh, systems of the plant systems therefore it can disrupt the natural process of gene flow a little bit deviation from what we uh, what we are having in nature the pest might become resistant to the toxins also produced by these crops and ultimately uh, crop production might decline also, there are some ethical issues related to GMO crops. Many people think that uh, GMO crops are not suitable for consumption or uh, some social unrest is also there. Uh, but uh, right now in Sri Lanka, uh, we do not grow these GMO crops. But I have read one paper article written by one professor uh, but uh, not uh, in, involved in agriculture sector that all, all the varieties grown in Sri Lanka are GMO uh, seeds. But that is not true. Uh, we you normally used improved varieties, uh, not GMO or uh, GMO crops.
then uh, this uh, seeds of uh, yeah uh, seeds as a summary uh, for the uh, question you have asked sir these seeds of local varieties normally these derived from traditional crop varieties that have naturally evolved over time so it is a natural process uh, we can accept those seeds as it is. Then seeds of selectively bred varieties, these seeds obtained through the controlled uh, breeding of the same crop variety. This is also natural, the natural process, but accelerated by our breeders. So uh, do not hesitate to use these kind of seeds. Then hybrid seeds also, uh, these seeds result in from crossbreeding of two genetically pure uh, parental lines, uh, a process also occurs naturally but expedited by breeders. Then uh, imported seeds, uh, some people think that imported seeds are not suitable for this country, but uh, uh, in uh, some seeds are essential for our country like upcountry vegetables cannot be produced here. But uh, the, these seeds also produce as the similar way which I have explained earlier, or op open pollinated varieties, so hybrids, uh, and also DOA before importing uh, adaptability trials or whether those seeds are suitable for our country are being tested. Therefore, uh, those seeds are also can be used for the cultivation. So the truth is this improved hybrid or uh, imported seeds prove to be optimal choices for farming, effectively addressing the imperative or nourishing the growing global populations. So our recommendation is a comprehensive approach that incorporates various seed types, including traditional varieties is crucial to meet the present, present demand. However, GMO suitability is a complex issue and questionable and decisions to cultivate GMO should be based on thorough assessment of the many factors. Thank so, you very much, Lakmini. I think that's great. It's a long but very clear explanation for us to know how, I mean, how and why people started thinking that the improved varieties, hybrids, and the imported varieties, some people think they are not suitable for our own conditions and for cultivations. And you have given a very clear uh, strategy and, and, and a clear uh, information about, I mean, that there's nothing to be feared about, but there are certain cases that we have to take precautions naturally. And that's why people like you and the Department of Agriculture are here in this country to safeguard the interest of our people. While saying so, and as I told the audience also, Lakmini, this is a planned presentation. We know what we are trying to address. And the next question that I forward to you, which I would like you to address at this stage, which I know, which I know the next slides are going to be on these things, is about the seed certification. Now, seed certification is something that people are worried about in certain cases, and we talk about it a lot, saying that it is a, it is something that is required in this country. Now, my question is, do you think every seed used in the country requires seed certification? Or what yes. do you know, Lakmini? And while saying yeah. so, there are questions that are coming up, Lakmini, in the chat box. I will okay. make sure at the end, those questions will be forwarded to you so that you can answer during uh, soon after your presentation is completed. That okay. will be during this webinar. Over to you, Lakmini, for the meeting. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, then... Uh... Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. many people think that since I'm working in the seed certification, there are so many myths on seed certification. But seed certification is a quality assurance process uh, which ensures that seeds are sufficiently pure genetically as well as physically, then healthy and viable and correctly labeled. Uh, so, uh, purpose of seed certification is to maintain and make available to the public high quality seeds and propagating materials of superior crop plant varieties uh, to grow and distribute it as to ensure genetic purity. Uh, so, uh, 
how uh, how does this uh, do in the seed certification service actually there are three parties that are involved in a farmer then the uh, consumer or farmer uh, then seed producer and as the third party official third party seed certification service of the department of agriculture is involved in for monitoring or verification of the seed production processing uh, so normally this is conducted through a number of uh, limited number of generations i'll explain those seed classes from breeder seeds to certified seeds the whole idea is to maintain the uh, their genetic purity and other quality parameters uh, so just to uh, actually this is a long process but i have summarized to a few points like uh, in certification program there are two parts one is field certification and the second one is seed uh, testing so field certification uh, field registration is there then two or three uh, field inspections especially at the flowering and harvesting stages then sampling three kind of sampling processes are there then seed testing labeling uh, for further this uh, after field inspection the sampling officer itself uh, draw samples for laboratory testing then once uh, it was uh, it is accepted then uh, go for labeling sealing or lot release for further verification we go for post control test or we grow those uh, higher especially higher seed classes before moving further whether those seeds are in quality those are uh, grown in the field and tested or evaluated the, this is just uh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to explain uh, this. This is the laboratory testing procedure. Uh, normally, we uh, do, uh, do a germination, uh, then genetic purity, health, seed health test, moisture uh, test, as well as uh, purity test. Uh, so those are the seed classes we use. Uh, paddy OFC, then vegetables. Then uh, there are breeder foundation. Uh, registered certified because uh, paddy and OFC mostly those crops are self pollinated there so there are four uh, multiplication channels or classes but for vegetables only three uh, we are you uh, there are only three seed classes like breeder basic and standards as though most of the vegetables are cross pollinated therefore for self pollinated crops many people think that there should be 100% certified seed in the country even in other countries or so developed countries the idea is for self-pollinating crops 25 percent of certified seeds are sufficient for crop pollinate uh, cross-pollination crops it is around 30 to 50 percent but for hybrid 100 percent certified should be uh, provided as we have to maintain the hybridity or hybrid vigor so the remaining or the balance rest uh, should be uh, provided uh, or produced in the uh, farming community or with the private sector or the industry people while encouraging the lateral spread of those seeds. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, the seed uh, certification, it is mandatory, uh, the varietal characters or that uh, extinct, uh, distinct identifiable characteristics are needed because we identify the varietal characters uh, before identifying these uh, exactly defined characters should be there. Then only field certification can be done even for the laboratory testing. Therefore, uh, certification is done only officially released varieties. And the second one is for of local varieties, uh, normally lacking distinct characteristics, uh, or less uh, those characters are changing. Actually, we do not encourage to go for uh, uh, this um, uh, purification of some um, uh, genetically diverse crop i mean uh, not lo some local varieties as i have mentioned earlier bean seed they are uh, they are naturally evolving if we disturb those systems the genetic diversity will be lost therefore uh, 
we do not recommend certification. However, quality assurance or commitment to ensure in quality are essential. Even though they are traditional, you can't give uh, poor quality seeds. Thank you very much, uh, Lakmani. And that's pretty clear, I think. You have already gone into the next slide, which I wanted to ask a question because that's a slide that you have put forward. That's important. So it's a distinctness what matters, isn't it? That's that's yes. the category that you will be looking at. Yes, sir. Uh, I would also like to know, Lakmini, since we discussed earlier also about what many people think about the overall seed industry and the way the seeds produced and used in Sri Lanka. I mean, I mean, there are two things that come to my mind. I want you yes, to sir. respond to these two things or, or people have in their mind, which I also consider as myths, which we need to clarify. The first one is about the varietal purity, whether varietal purity is in an essential for traditional crop varieties. When you talk, of, because when you when you when you spoke of the certification, this is the question that usually comes to our mind when we look at the traditional varieties. And the next one, I want you to continue to address these two. First thing is the varietal purity about the traditional varieties, and then a lot of people say I've heard in newspapers, television discussions, webinars saying that. All the vegetable seed requirement in Sri Lanka are fulfilled by imported seeds. I mean, those are those are interesting arguments that come up. People yeah. are asking why are we meeting our requirements only by importing seeds? Now, I just want you to clarify these two points continuously in this webinar. Okay. Over to you, Lakmini. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, this is also. Uh, uh, controversial issue as well. Now I have very uh, good uh, good experience on this. Now uh, the uh, professional in other uh, uh, professionalism in other sector, not in agriculture, they have uh, tried to promote the tradition traditional crop uh, cultivation by even they put uh, proposals to expand this cultivation to ten thousand hectares in the country, especially major growing areas. So they have distributed some seeds to the farmers. I uh, uh, I went to those farmers and drew some, some seed samples and tested in our laboratory. There I have seen uh, normally as ISTA procedure, that's, that is international seed testing procedure, we have drawn samples and tested in uh, according to ISTA procedures. We have realized out of 25,000 seeds, uh, 10,000 seeds are ODV or other distinguishable varieties. Normally, they are not traditional. Uh, uh, some cultivable varieties are also there, but that is a mixture. Then I asked uh, the person who is in the field, uh, why do you distribute this kind of seed? Then that person's answer is normally traditional varieties are uh, like that. It is a mixture of seeds. But yeah, traditional varieties, of course, we earlier we mentioned their uh, distinct characteristics are not there. But still, uh, if any person wanted to produce quality uh, characters, they uh, have they they want to market the traditional varieties. Their character should be kept with them. Then only they can uh, put those or the, they can uh, sell those seeds to the farmers as well as. Uh, regulatory bodies whenever they request they have to provide those information and also uniformity is should be there otherwise our farmers uh, will suffer due to poor quality seeds so uh, seed quality assurance is always very important in traditional varieties also even though we said that uh, certification is not necessary uh, but uh, quality assurance or the testing for the variety, uniformity, then purity, uh, other quality parameters should be maintained. Then, uh, the, sir, you have asked this question at last. So, all uh, vegetable seed, even I have heard in some higher authorities, uh, some politicians and some other people, they have said all vegetable seeds requirement are fulfilled by imported seeds. 
I, I'll just uh, explain using the uh, information or slide I got from Dr. Indika Virasekara from SPMDC. So here uh, we can see uh, now our, especially this vegetable seed sector, now our uh, low country vegetable seed uh, requirement is around 7, 000, uh, 700,000 uh, seeds but upcountry vegetable around 100,000. These upcountry vegetables, of course, we have to uh, import those seeds because environmental conditions are not suitable for seed production in this country. But uh, low country vegetables, out of this uh, 700,000, around 15% uh, uh, are produced by the Department of Agriculture with their country growing system. Uh, but also private sector involved with the pri private sector also involving for 15 percent of uh, seed requirement supplying 15 percent of seed requirement then uh, farm saved varieties earlier we have discussed this uh, and uh, this farmer saved or traditional varieties contributed to 40 percent uh, but only 30% of the seeds are produced to this country or imported to this country. But uh, many people think that 100, we depend on 100% 100 imported seeds, but that is not the reality. Uh, so uh, this message should be given even to policymakers, Department of Agriculture contributing a lot. Even this 15%, most of the basic seeds are produced by the Department of Agriculture. And sometimes farmers themselves maintaining the, in, but in, when we uh, find the source of those seeds, they have initiated fr from the seeds obtained from the Department of Agriculture. So uh, that is the reality, but uh, many people think I'll, uh, with the data, I'll explain it more, like uh, some varieties, uh, snake goat, best uh, snake, snake goat varieties are available in our country. So we do not export or very little amount, negligible amount is imported. Then uh, we are having very good variety, you know, uh, recently released, or not recently, but a very popular variety A9. Then bitter good uh, only eleven percent. Uh, only few crops uh, of seeds of few crops import uh, fifty per, more than fifty percent of seeds are imported. But uh, we, uh, with the uh, involvement of uh, all the stakeholders, this amount uh, there is a possibility to reduce importation of these seeds. So uh, that is the uh, clarification for. Uh, the last question you have asked, sir. So with your permission, I'll just, I wanted to give some uh, information if any person or uh, wanted to, to uh, if wants to, if any person want to become a seed producer or seed, seed entrepreneur, uh, there are standard procedures. Sir, Buddhism, may I continue or? Yes, please go ahead, please go yeah. ahead. Uh, yeah, just two slides I'll explain. So if, uh, any person wants to become a certified seed producer, uh, they have to obtain a registration in the seed deck. Then uh, you, they can use uh, basic seeds produced by the space PMDC for, for multiplication needed or the, for the uh, seeds required for the next generation. So two weeks after the crop establishment, they have to inform to the seed certification service for certification. Then certification officers will visit your fields and uh, they draw samples for laboratory testing and also labeling will be done by the seed certification officers. But uh, sometimes we have seen that many people are involved in uh, seed production of traditional crops or so their own uh, quality assured seeds, then just uh, they have to obtain their seed act registration. Uh, then, uh, but non basic seeds should be obtained with the desirable characteristics should be uh, uh, given or uh, clearly uh, should be kept with them. Then on they can go for own quality assurance as well as laboratory testing and own labeling. Uh, Apart from that, uh, any person, if they want to become a seed handler, there are uh, some simple procedures they have to follow. Uh, 
so these are the uh, uh, see the certification service uh, and they are satellite stations to get uh, services of quality seed production. So they do not uh, uh, come to the Peradene or Ganoro Colombo. Uh, so they can go to nearest uh, regional office and get the required information for this. Uh, then I'll just uh, end uh, with this uh, 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 Lord Buddha's uh, statement. Uh, yeah. That uh, I have got it from C testing laboratory repair denia. It is uh, still uh, uh, they are displaying this one. Datwa subi jang kasikam kas nas natu bijanu bawant mehi gunat nuk bijela badi ma ya hapat itu ni wana itu hitu ekila sama mang apa ham itu ni kue mang itu ane meka bij karma ante kita tadiya. Uh, we think that uh, beyond uh, the business or entrepreneurship, this uh, uh, big uh, beneficial or the big uh, industry with uh, uh, supporting the uh, farming community as well as uh, all uh, our uh, population in the country. So thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Lakmini Priyanta, for, for being the first resource person of the series of webinars. As our president of the AAPP said, we are going to have these seminars on every Wednesday in the second and fourth week of a given month. If there are any changes, we'll let the membership and others know through the WhatsApp connections and so on. So whatever said and done, that's extremely important, uh, Dr. Lakmini, for looking at these myths the people had and coming up with the true facts so that people understand, do understand, realize what is happening at the ground level. And thank you very much for eloquently addressing the four questions that we asked from you and you have ordered, you have arranged your presentation in an orderly manner and that's what makes it really important for people, especially who are joining us online. And while saying so, Lakmini, there are many questions that have come up. So I would like to ask one by one from you and there are a few questions asking for the presentation, what you did. Well, I will leave it with the AAFAUP. The, the secretary and the president are here and we can decide on how this presentation can be uh, publicized or, or make sure people will have access to it so that they can get better information. Okay. Apart from those things, there's one question, Lakpini. There's a question okay. from Tusita Kumarakulazingam, who categorically asked, why does it take so long to approve new varieties? And the question is, can't it be done faster? So that's the question for you. Over to you, Lakmini. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, actually, sir, it's a long, it's a long process. Now, uh, this I, uh, I have mentioned I'm not a breeder, but this uh, person who involved in the breeding process knows that the variety development it should be uh, once they cross it, they you know in normal. Uh, Crossing program, back crossing programs are there. So normally it takes to stabilize around by to service. So after that, even adaptability or the uh, adaptable to environmental conditions like post study, we test it in several locations, NC, NCVRT. Then wet trials, I mean, variety added after. Uh, even uh, wet trials that this dust testing should be done to with to identify the novelty of those varieties whether it is distinct uniform or stabilized so there are so many tests have to be conducted otherwise uh, the country i uh, the continue the seed we can't go with the uh, st unstabilized variety we can't go for continuous seed production ultimately whole process will lost therefore it will take long time uh, uh, but using uh, even department of agriculture right now they are started to this mark uh, assisted breeding or identify to cut uh, to, to 
So they are this particular bionics to identify the good traits. By that we right development. But thank, still, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you very much. Here, technology can support uh, cutting short the time. Yeah. And because when the as and when required, we will have to provide the required planting material or germ plasm to the farming community for them to make sure agriculture prospers, their livelihood is managed, and the country people, the country will definitely have food to eat even under drastic climatic conditions so varietal development is a continuous process and we do understand it's not an easy process as well as you yes. as you told very quick very quickly. for example or yes, come up with a team usually it take about 25 years to start doing that but technologically the DRIS down to 18 years still quite a period of time which you should not forget if you take the crops, it's tend to you cannot build up or develop a variety. You can develop a variety, but then to, to make sort of that is quite a lot of other additional information should come in. But I'm glad that you are used to see how fast and know in other words. To Uh, yeah, I think there are two whether this can be realized. Seed certification. Yes, so they, yeah. yeah. But yeah, now uh, the, uh, the seed certificate should be uh, in centrally. Uh, this centrally decent. Could otherwise uh, common practices will not be available. So, but uh, there I have mentioned. So I have shown the map of uh, certification uh, bodies. So uh, those uh, uh, regional officers are located uh, each and every district in the country. So any person can get the help of that uh, from that per place. Also facilities of uh, instead of decentralizing uh, facilities of those centers to be developed, then uh, the service can be provided for the uh, uh, main uh, big uh, area or as well as many people in the country. Thank you very much, Lakmini, for that response. And uh, Mr. Parakramaja, who is a well known figure who is shown from you now. Isn't the problem with imported hybrid seeds is that they are supposed to be bred to be dependent on chemical fertilizers and pesticides? Is asking, is this true? No, that's not true, actually, sir. They are not uh, in, intentionally bred uh, to respond to pesticides and fertilizers. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, some uh, resistant varieties are also there. Uh, but uh, suppose uh, these imported seeds, before I mentioned in my presentation as well, before introducing to our country, we uh, test those varieties or the adaptability in our conditions in two seasons. We trials are being conducted by the Department of Agriculture. If uh, those varieties are not adaptable or highly, especially pest and disease resistance, then uh, we uh, do not uh, recommend those varieties for the cultivation. So, uh, yeah, many people think that uh, these hybrids are specifically imported for uh, uh, resistant varieties for some pest and diseases, but we have observed, but in some cases, those are also susceptible because uh, for the genetic diversity or the biodiversity, similarly, uh, one uh, as one of the scientists uh, in, from Japan mentioned, this applies for plant pathogens. So those are, uh, yeah, those diversities are microbial diversities also there. Therefore, uh, those were. Uh, 
imported varieties are similar to our one. We have to carefully use those varieties. Thank you, Lakmini. Well, many people have I uh, mean acknowledge your presentation, saying that it's an excellent yeah. presentation. Mr. Leonard Ranasinghe, Dr. Ranjit Punyavadhan, and many others have said that. There's a question from Shamin. Shamin, I hope I have got this correct because of the way you have written it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but not verbally in the in the chat. What Shamin said is that import ca imported capsicum seeds like Muria, the small packets, normal selling price is rupees seven hundred rupees one thousand. Why is that Sri Lanka seed producers or companies are not growing probably? He has said growing, but not growing probably. These seeds locally license of foreign companies. I mean, this question comes up every time like Sindh is saying that we are importing seeds, hybrid seeds, which are very costly. So the question being asked, why is that our own producers get us from the foreign suppliers and start doing it? Is that our company? Yes, uh, now it's a huge, uh, even last few uh, years back, two years back from onwards, uh, this problem was horizon and uh, yeah, cost is very high. Uh, but uh, I prefer to go for these hybrid seeds as well as uh, this, they normally they use uh, these imported seeds and uh, uh, yeah, if I got the question very um, very correctly, sir, this right now we don't have any provisions to control the price of the seeds. The seed act uh, provision is need, not given for the uh, price control, but we have taken some steps to at least regulate this one with the help of Minister of Agriculture uh, to uh, to assign a maximum price for each and every seed rather than uh, giving blanket uh, recommendations. So uh, the next uh, the sub question is uh, uh, now, uh, yeah, same license. Now uh, there are uh, requirements in the country, but of course some seeds we can produce, but for some, uh, uh, some uh, requirements like uh, some cooker bitter gourd varieties for the export market they should be they should not be uh, matured or the yellow in color during uh, transportation so at that time we have to uh, allow them to uh, in, uh, allow them to uh, import otherwise uh, there is no point, uh, we can't go for exportation so there are uh, so many factors are involved in even for the, this price control as well as giving the uh, import license to them so local persons as well as some industries some uh, companies they only involve in, uh, in this uh, importation but some are both production and importation so the Thank, yeah, thank you very much, Lakmini. So if anyone wants to know further about this subject, please contact Dr. Lakmini Priyanta, who is at the Seed Certification Service of the Department of Agriculture. I'm sure that she will be providing you with more information. Um, there's one uh, comment that was asked by Mr. Vicky Vikramatunga, well-known agri-entrepreneur in Sri Lanka. Now, is, I know in the current context, he's overseas, but I'm glad that he has joined. He, Mr. Vicky Vikramatunga is trying to convert a question that was asked by me from you when you start doing your presentation. And this is what he says. There is a common and political argument stating that all seeds required by farmers should be produced locally. And what he says is this can never be done. Mm -hmm. Please explain the DOA policy on this matter. Over to you, Lakmani. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Actually, as Sri Lankans, we prefer if we can produce all the seeds in the country, local, which locally produce seeds. But the problem is market uh, demand. Also, some uh, I uh, as I mentioned, so some uh, varieties are needed having specific characteristics. Those seeds to be imported, and also the seed industry is growing. Uh, so, uh, the, as this is a global world, uh, we can't uh, survive alone 
oh now uh, i am happy to say that one uh, hybrid variety developed by the department of agriculture now one company has uh, involved uh, for the exportation so there are potentials are there so we, one uh, once we involve in, in that kind of activities even importation uh, there is a requirement also farmers require high yield in varieties therefore uh, normally uh, uh, we we as the department of agriculture we promote local seed production as also we are taking um, uh, we are taking the responsibility of producing competitive varieties but at the same time depending on the market type allow the importation as well but not thank promoting you. yeah yeah thank you very much lakmini for that very interesting response that you gave a lot of people who are congratulated for your presentation president of the president of the sri lanka institute of agriculture has said i mean he, i mean said that is a well organized presentation um, the tusta tusita kumar kulasinga once again uh, want to say that it's very informative then visna says excellent presentation and many people want like chatra sevandi uh many people wanted your presentation uh wiki kamathuko once again said this is a good one and and send a congratulatory note to you in the meantime dr ranjit punnojan has signed now saying that have a rainful have a rainy weekend have a rainy long weekend being an agroclimatologist <laughs> probably that's one of the best advices that he can give at this day so all in all thank you very much dr lakmini priyanka for being very open very clear and giving the scientific facts busting the myths it's important that we all know what exactly happens at the ground level in terms of legal aspects and the practical aspects as well so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for joining us this this is the first of such efforts the alumni association of faculty of agriculture at university of peradeniya has embarked on by educating people with respect to many issues related to agriculture i think that is uh, uh, something that we 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 must do we consider it our responsibility as well and we'll continue to serve our society like this and those members who were uh, joined they may have their emails via our secretary dr nayanaka will definitely will look into that and will send you the relevant presentation done by dr lakmini priyanka as well so thank you once again on behalf of the aafa up that is alumni association of faculty of agriculture university of peradeniya let me thank dr lakmini priyanka once again and thanks to dr tushar vikramachi who has been here with us the president of the aafa up and all the members including the secretary dr nayanaka who has been uh, live wire behind setting up all these things and making sure this uh, uh, presentation or webinar is a reality we'll move forward based on your ideas maybe our language of instruction would differ in the future depending on the audience that we are going to have because i think it's important that more people are going to join us in the future as it, as well today at this late hours i mean we had at a given point about 52 participants now many of us they may many of them have left we do understand the scenario but this is the time period that we are going to have these presentations so let's join in the next webinar series and it will be people the interested parties will be updated on this thank you very much for joining us and good night thank you good night <laughs>